You know, I, I've been struck, uh, I've been moved to tears, actually, by the stories of the extraordinary heroism that uh, Israeli forces have exhibited, Israeli police have exhibited, Israeli civilians have exhibited uh, since yesterday morning. Um, some of the stories are just amazing. For instance, I'll just share one of a woman in Ofakim, one of the towns, it's 30 kilometers from Gaza, and yet, you know, they were, they, the uh, Hamas terrorists managed to uh, penetrate that city and uh, carry out some extraordinary atrocities, including hostage taking and mass slaughter. And uh, this mother was in, in her house with her son, who's a cadet at officer training course, and he had his rifle at home with him for, for Shabbat and for the high holidays. And so he was on a furlough, and his mother uh, saw, she heard gunfire uh, in a in a in a in a uh, playground on the corner of their block, and she told her son he had to go out and see what was happening, and he ran out, and um, she ran out after him just because uh, she did, and. Uh, and so he and, and some other uh, soldiers who had run out of their houses with their guns went and they were shooting, I think, two out of seven of the terrorists. And then her son was wounded and um, the terrorists were getting away and he was trying to, and they disabled his rifle and he was uh, running into a building to try to seek cover. At any rate, uh, there's a whole long story about that. But the mother... Um, she just grabbed the, her car. There was no ambulance around, and nobody was answering the calls for help there or anywhere else, really, in southern Israel for a full 12 hours. And she saw that nobody was responding to the calls of distress. So she just got into her car and started transporting the wounded to the hospital on her own. And she did three uh, separate uh, trips, the last one with her wounded son, who she was able to find in a, an apartment that had been convinced that he wasn't a terrorist and allowed him and some other wounded soldiers in uh, to their home, uh, despite the danger. And so, you know, it, it, the son was an incredible hero. His colleagues were incredible heroes, the other soldiers who came out, and his mother was. And and you hear about the story, you see the pictures of Israelis standing on line for hours to donate blood. Uh, today, and the stories of the heroism of the soldiers uh, fighting Hamas is just uh, unbelievable. And um, you know, I, I look at I look at these stories, I listen to these stories, and I think you probably can hear that I, I'm on the verge of tears just telling them. Um, and I think that you know, uh, I, just as the seventy three war was decided by our lying soldiers who were just lions. Uh, and the general staff was uh, having a nervous breakdown. That that may be the case again today. But you know, what, if looking at our 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 people and their incredible courage and devotion, and looking at the um, sort of obs uh, uh, obstructionist view of the general staff and the Americans, and seeing Netanyahu right there in the middle of it, how do you? How do you assess them? These the, extraordinary it's the people. same spirit that led the Jews from the ashes of the Holocaust to resurrection in only three years, from the darkest moment of Jewish history to the to the rebirth of the greatest moment of Jewish history, and perhaps a purchase for for a period of maybe still the greatest period of Jewish history to come. What it is is for the religious, the faith carries forward in the darkest of moments. For the secular, it's this deep sense of peoplehood being part of a chain that reaches back 4,000 years that, ha that, that is so embedded in your DNA and ingrained in your body that it is, it is a family. You feel like you're part of a family with, an, with a glorious and, uh, and a history that it is, it's, not, it's becoming of you to carry it forward. With the with 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 a degree of selflessness and sacrifice, and certainly with unwavering commitment, so both secular and religious Israelis carry with them a tremendous spirit. You saw it in '73. You see it now. 
You saw it in other wars, and small, even those that went well had bad situations. The, you see it in terrorist attacks again and again. The immense spirit of the Israeli people, the Jewish people, will not be defeated, which is why we're still here after 4,000 years when every history book should have written us out. Uh, this is, you know, Paul Johnson and his history. He starts with the, well, the Jews. He starts with that, that, that uh, by all historical measures, the Jews shouldn't exist. And yet they do. And, and, and this is the case. So our army under the flag rank level is becoming of our kids, of our people. This is an army of heroes, an army of people who are lions, who will fight to the death. And that will guarantee that Israel has a bright future ahead, and it guarantees that the Israelis will emerge victorious. But the flag rank, the highest levels of the military, is unaligned now with Israeli society, unaligned with Israeli spirit, and it, it therefore doesn't buy into the, some of the determination and strength and gumption that, that, that is becoming of the Israeli people. Uh, that is, that, uh, and, and therefore, there really needs to be a shakeup at the end of this of the top levels. They need to be as good as the soldiers under them.